Hi guys, we are here to give you an example of what catch up would look like. So um, the first video you saw was probably me saying, hey, I have this idea for us to clap for our classmates to catch up. And I've had like two responses. People are like, yes, Nikki, I'm all in, all in. Everything is good to go. Yeah. And then some yeah. people are like, I'm all in, but tell me how I participate without actually having to go on camera. And then some people are like, yeah, I'm good at going on camera. Then some minutes pass by and then they say, well, does it mean I'm going to get my questions beforehand and I'm going to be nervous. Oh, okay, I'm scared. So I said, let me go first so you can see what this looks like. And my cousin has volunteered. Yes, I have. <laughs> my cousin is Loy, um, if anyone doesn't know. Hi. And she's been with me for a couple of years yes. now um, as she travels back and forth. And she is amazing and her cooking is fantastic. So, Loy, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Loy. And as Nakia said, I'm her cousin. And today we're going to do our first official video of ketchup. All right. So I have a list of questions here and you're going to be asked the same question. And I'm going to hand it over to Loy so she can go through. But it, the anatomy of ketchup is we have three major sections. We have today so we can know what you're doing today. What, then we take a look back in terms of yesterday. And then the last section is looking forward, um, knowing what we know today with our lessons learned and sharing that. All right. So with that, I hand these questions off to Loy. Okay, here we go, guys. <laughs> so, Nakia, today we're going to talk about ketchup. <laughs> and first we're going to start off with now. What have you been up to now? What have I been up to now? What have I not been up to? I think Eli, this, that's my third born. He is five and Elisha has lived in five states. Wow. But either way, so, <laughs> so back from high school, I went to teacher's college and I came to the U.S., um, did engineering. I thought I was going to teach in the U S thought that I will go to jail. <laughs> so I did engineering instead after graduating, went to GE and that's when we started to move around. But right now we're in Cincinnati and, um, and we're loving it. So right now I have three sons. My firstborn is Joshua. David is my second born, the boss of the house. <laughs> and Elisha is our baby, our sweetheart. I'm married to Karen Salmon, which I've known since I'm nine years old, but I didn't like him no matter what he tells you. Um, and we've been married now for 15 years, I think. Wow. It has been a journey. Um, and that's it. That's for so far. So. How about work? Work. So work. So work. What, I, what do I do for work? Every time somebody asks me that, I struggle with trying to figure out how to answer that question. But the most simple way to put it for this role that I'm in, we are changing our, um, our IT systems and our IT landscape. I sit on the business side. I used to be in IT, but I'm like the middle piece in terms of I know the business speak and I know the IT speak. So trying to make sure that we're on the same page as we transition from one IT system to a more modern IT system and making sure that we also change our business processes. So I kind of lead that effort with a large, humongous team and I'm a member of that team. So that's wow. what I do today. That is fantastic. That's great. Great Thank accomplishment. You. So other than work, how about family-wise? What do you do with the boys, your husband, and stuff like that? Family, what do you do? You how know, would you term <laughs> that? Well, how would you describe it? So I think for, for our family, we, we, to, be, to be honest, playing with the boys, the boys are all nerds like their dad <laughs> and they love devices. <laughs> so in our house on the weekend, it's them playing on their devices while mommy watch them or watch cartoon or we catch up on the latest movie. One of the things that we, we also love to do is, especially me and you, is that we, <laughs> we just sit and watch like a whole series <laughs> for the whole weekend. We come up and we eat and then we come back. Like one of our favorite was House of Cards. Yes. I still can't get over. I know. Fra it's not going to be with the same without Frank. It's not going to be the same but, at all. Um, but as a family, we're pretty low key. We kind of stay in and we're trying to change that in Cincinnati because we don't want to go to one state and by the time we're leaving, we're no wiser because we stay home. But that's basically it. So would you say we're born? Well, yes. <laughs> We're pretty much born. Netflix. Yes. <laughs> okay. So because of that, we don't have much hobbies that we do, right? 
So I was I was gonna try to say hobby, but we don't have much. Hey, hobby. hey, hey! I started painting. That counts. Well, well and, yes, and fantastic doing, painter. Yeah, fantastic um, painter. I started painting and doing this project is now a new hobby, which I'm super excited about. Which is great. Which is so great. now she has something else to focus on. <laughs> Just a little secret there. Oh. So moving on. All right, we're gonna talk about high school. High school. High wow. school. When I was skinny. High school. Oh my god, I was so skinny. It was amazing. It was amazing. You wanted to go naked back then. I know. If I knew <laughs> when, that through life all this stuff is gonna change and gravity was gonna take a toll, oh I my. would walk naked down the streets of South Lamar oh because my. my body was amazing. And you would have said, "I've done that. I've so done that. I Check. can do this now." Okay, but now no, you know. So tell, take me to your back to your high school days, like with the teachers and stuff. Like what that. was like my favorite teacher? Yeah. You know, I had school for me was um, was awesome. I actually look forward to going to school, um, going to manning school, even primary school. Um, my favorite teachers. You know, I've had quite a number of teachers that I liked, um, and my teachers played a huge role in my life um the two that stand out to me now and if i forget others you know forgive me but miss anderson comes to mind and she taught us math i think she's married and her name is now scott um and miss anderson was amazing to me she made math applicable she's the one who made me want to go teach as well in terms of being a math and science teacher in jamaica and she was an awesome listener down to earth late she didn't play when she was at school School, by the way and in class but outside of class she went to the same church and she was a great support system for me mrs dawkins now i think i love mrs dawkins because she was crazy she <laughs> spoke her mind she never held back she taught us spanish she taught wow. us english by the way everyone knows i cannot spell i hate english but i love mrs sure. dawkins <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Dawkins has was with me throughout high school and through some some challenging times even after high school. And I loved when she would go into her perfect Englified mode and then she could switch at the drop of a hat and go into some pattern that was like no other in terms of her pronunciation and how <laughs> how she, how she made that language sound. But those are the, my two favorite teachers. Okay, so I heard you said earlier about math was being one of your favorite subjects. So <laughs> I was going to say, so tell me about your favorite subjects. But now I know math is yeah. the top of the list. Yeah, math, math is definitely. I love math because no matter what the teacher thought of me, is either right or wrong. In English, it's very subjective, and it didn't help that I couldn't spell. So just for and there was no spell check. Just we couldn't record. type. We had to write. I hate coming to her with math because she makes it seem like it is so easy, like spelling a word from me because I'm good, I'm good at spelling. But and her, cooking. And cooking. So Are you going to tell me you really fried the chicken? And stop <laughs> telling me the bad thing because when I fried chicken, it doesn't taste like her fried chicken. When I go to her with a math problem and she works it, I'm looking at her like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so she is perfect at math and I admire her for that, but I can't stand her because she knows it so much. Talk about memories. Memories. High school memories. What favorite memory? Oh my gosh, there's so many memories. Um, some are good to out. share and some are not so good to the one share. That, out. that we'll have to go with some of us, is <laughs> my circle of friends to the grave. <laughs> um, but I think that for me, in terms of what I enjoyed in high school, was dancing. Remember, guys, I used to, I used to, I could move. Were you a badass? I was a badass, and I was skinny, and I could move. And I loved it. When I was dancing and when I was on stage, I felt most alive. And I loved that. So we used to have different functions and we used to practice. By the way, the people in my dance group probably didn't like me because I was a perfectionist. And of course, I've changed. That's a lie. I'm still a perfectionist. But, um, but I used to say, as soon as they get a move around, do it again. And we'll practice and I'm like, do it again. And they would like hate me. But at the night of the performance... When it's when we totally just mash up the place, <laughs> they would be like, that was amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Then they love me <laughs> until the next time we have to practice and they hate me again. And what that was my favorite part of high school. So scaling it down a bit, Nakia, we're gonna talk about personality. Personality. What about personality now? Describe what it is you like in high school. What is uh huh? And what I'm like now. And what <laughs> it is it today? <laughs> 
well in high school I was one way and then today I'll change do you believe that no that's yes um I think in high school yeah what I, I would say well, how would I, I would describe my personality or my classmates I would say I was a class clown um, um, really? in Jamaica, they would say, I'm a fiesty, I'm a fiesty, but I'm a dark, I'm a easy to get upset. I think I'm the same. <laughs> I think, I think, I, I, I think in terms of my personality, I'm still super fun. I would say I was less confident then, okay. um, in terms of confident in myself. I think now I'm a little bit braver because I've gotten some hits and gotten back up um, in this life. I think um, I'm working on my patience. I'm working on being level-headed, but I am still dark. If you just look at me wrong, I'm ready to be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to talk to myself. I said, hold on, is this real? Is this really a threat? Am I overcorrecting? But the base of Nakia, I think, is still the same. But I have learned quite a number of lessons because I want to live my best life. So I'm still working at it. I'm a work in progress. So you progress. would say you've grown. I've grown. A lot. I've grown a lot. And you've now been able to say, okay, this is at this level. And in order to move forward, I have to think outside the box and go here. And go and here. This. Right. I guess we are, we are both growing. You can balance it now. I can balance it now. I would say you're more bold. You think so? I think you're more bold because before certain things you were like, um, no, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> but now you're like, I'm gonna try it, and if I fail, I said, but you are more bold. Yes. And you tend to say, I can do this. I've seen you grow. I'm proud of you. Moving forward. I can't wait when I have to interview <laughs> you. But thank you. <laughs> yes. So, yes, I would say you've grown, and. You are living your best life. Thank you, guys. Okay. Moving on. We're going to go back again. We're going to talk about the yesterday. The yesterday. What about yesterday? Now? What did you believe about yourself that was totally, in quotation, bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> now that you look back. Um, you know, there are so many things. I know. I know. <laughs> it's going to be a lot. There's a lot of things that I thought about myself in so many different areas that were wrong. Areas in terms of just me. Mm -hmm. Areas in terms of relationships, you know, dating, friendships that was total BS. But I think in high school, in terms of what I believed about me, what I believed about me that I had to work through, work through, work through, that is total BS that I thought that I was ugly. I thought, I believed that I was ugly. Yes. <laughs> Are you looking in the... Were you, did you have a mirror back there? Hey, hey, you asked me what I believe. Okay, okay, this is okay. not about you, man. Okay, you okay. said what I believe. Okay, sorry. Correction, but, go. But, but <laughs> honestly, so I, so I grew up, when I was in, in Westmoreland, I grew up thinking throughout that range in Mannings, in the life of Mannings. And even at primary school, I hated looking in the mirror or seeing myself. I did not believe at all that I was anything to look at that looked good. Um, to me, when I look in the mirror, I didn't like, I didn't like what I saw and I didn't believe, yeah, I didn't believe that what I saw was something that was beautiful. And when I moved to Kingston, um, and I was going to Holy Childhood, I remember, um, I was in sixth form and I think I was, uh, the head of the, the sports, the sports, the, the sports club, you know, that they have different houses. Right. And there was one st student that was looking for, looking for me, I hear, and they were like, you know, I'm trying to look for this. And I was new, so they didn't know me and I didn't grow up there, you know, <laughs> and they're looking and, they, and they said the words that they used to describe, you know, the little six former man. And I had very short hair at the time, almost bald. And, and, and she said, you know, the, the, the cute six former that has very short hair and her skin is like so clean. Do you know that six former? And one of my friends said, you mean the Kia, you mean the new girl. And they're like, yes, that's six former. And the only thing I remember from that conversation was, the cute, was cute. The cute girl. Yeah. And I'm like, she said that? And I'm like, huh. The cute girl. The, huh. And that's, uh, and, I'm, and, and that's when I'm like, 
Oh. <laughs> that's a wake up call. That's a, li- just a little nudge. <laughs> and then after, after, then over the years, I think that's the first nudge. And over the years, I had to start talking to myself you said that you're in beautiful. the mirror. Yeah, and look and say, you are beautiful. I also wanted to be browner. Oh, girl, I wanted to be browner. I wanted to have long hair. By that time, no one knew I could buy it. No, I buy it and I put it on. I wanted long hair and I said if I had long hair and pretty if I was skin. pretty, you know, brown, light skin, then my world would be perfect. And um, it would be so much better. And that was not true because now I buy the hair and my it's still not perfect. The bleaching, no, I'm working on it. Still won't work. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I've I've come. I love my skin. I love my my tone, and and I've and I and I've come a long place. Still working. Still working on it because for me, I had um when I was pregnant with Elijah, right? For six months, I had Bell's palsy, where half of my face was paralyzed. Wow. I know. Half of my face was paralyzed, and thank God, most of it came back, but it's still there. Right. And so I. I'm conscious of it and I have to tell myself it's okay own it own it it's okay yes. it's okay you can get over it's a it. part of you it's a part of me and I'm just so happy that a lot of people they didn't come some of them it didn't come, come back, back at all and, and most blessed. importantly Elisha is alive and he's fine and at that time of my pregnancy super I thought smart. I was having a stroke <laughs> yeah and super smart super smart You're smart super, super smart boy very yeah. smart so you have had a journey back in the day and um, this is the short version <laughs> You've come the long way. Yeah. You're super beautiful. Thank you, hon. So just in case you still have <laughs> that thought, that the back of your mind, no. When you walk into a room, you own it. Thank you, cuz. You do. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> you own it, uh. yes. And back then, I don't know what was going on with you, but <laughs> I'm glad you've grown past it. Or I think she does. I'm working you know. on it. I'm working on it. So now, Nakia, talk to me. What advice would you give your younger self? So, you know I wrote these questions, right? <laughs> and you know that you're asking me. <laughs> you know you're asking me. Let me rephrase it again. Because okay. I'm going to go back. Right <laughs> just now. We okay, t- if it's not on the paper, you can ask. It's on the paper. Just now we talk about back in the day. And you said you thought you were not beautiful. So the question I'm still going to ask you, but with that thought that you had back in the day, what advice would you give your younger self, especially because you thought you were not beautiful? Oh, if you look at it from only the beautiful piece, would I use the beautiful piece? All right. So if I could go meet Nakia, the skinny Nakia, first of all, I'd be like, girl, stop wearing clothes. <laughs> What if I oh could, gosh. if I could um, go back to the, to the younger Nakia. Um, the low self-esteem Nakia. Nakia low self-esteem yes, Nakia. Nakia. I would say, I would tell her, everyone is jacked up. Everyone has their issues and you are not alone. I would say your experiences are not unique. I would say that this season you're in will only last for a certain time. And what you're doing is that you're building this strong foundation that will catapult you into a (laughs) badass, but you don't know yet. I would tell her that you are beautiful. You light up a room you have so much booming energy that even you can't even control it. You don't even know how to gauge it yourself. You have a tenacity that will serve you well and an ability to bounce back like none other. So even when you make mistakes, know that your strength is that you learn from it. And then you go back in being wiser. And I would tell her, you have an absolutely beautiful future. And there is so much joy, so much joy that is filled in it. And hang on, hang on, because things will get better. Things will get better. That's what I tell her. Perfect. I think she would, I don't think she would believe you though, but perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't think she would believe you, but perfect. So. 
Nakia. Yes. Walk us through one of your most challenging seasons and what did you learn about yourself? Which one of the seasons? I'm like, I had many challenging seasons. In fact, I think there was just like a couple of years of just hold one on, season. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> there's, a word, there's, there's a word in it. Most challenging. <laughs> Is that word that word most oh, challenging? Um, you know, I thought I had it right <laughs> in my back pocket. I know so I thought you did. I know we always um, thought we did. We, yeah, we always thought we did. But yeah, the most challenging one. I think the most challenging season for me was. When I came to the United States, um, in terms of after I studied and um, and I finished engineering and then I started in life here in corporate America and the culture here. Right. And, um, you know, in Jamaica, we're just so blunt and we're just so transparent. So this is normal Jamaica. And if this is the range of soft and nice, this is where my husband lives. He's kind of nice and laid back. Mm -hmm. And then this is where you and I live. Yes, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> you and I live in terms of very straightforward, very like blunt, and then the normal Jamaican. So I had to like try to be the normal Jamaican coming in and think I was good to go. But the culture was so very different. Um, so I struggled to feel that I belong. Okay. I struggled to see do I have a right to be here and um and will I be okay? And most of the time I believe that I didn't belong and I would never fit in and I'm never gonna get it. And it was tough. So I tried to be like other people that they thought they liked. I tried to be quieter. I tried to decrease my energy. Wow. That had to be challenging. <laughs> <laughs> that, that had to be challenging. Okay, oh, I tried to be so many things that you're not you're that i am not to try to fit into this mold that i couldn't fit into and it pulled on me so hard i even got sick at one time physically and i thought that there was something else was wrong but it was that i was trying to be someone who you're not someone who i'm not and then I went to a training class. It was an awesome class. It was like an off-peak class. There was like grown people there, mature people in that stage of their career, um, I remember. And we had an awesome teacher. And he asked us to write, us, write our values. Right. And they asked us very deep questions of what, we, what is important to us and who do we want to be. Right. And I had to write it down. I'm telling you, there's so much power in writing things down in black and white. I'm, I'm, learning, that. You. I'm learning that. She, she talks me into it. <laughs> I bought her a book. She forces me into it. I'll, I'll correct myself. And so the first time she gave, I was like, I don't know what to write. What do I write in this thing? Because I just like to keep it in here. Just in case someone comes across my book. <laughs> they know my deep book secrets. So, you know, uh, like, that's just me personally. But I'm starting to write stuff. She I should do an audit. Uh, should I audit? Have no, I ever no, audited the book? No, she, cannot, she cannot audit that book. That's the first book. Hey, hey. <laughs> there is... But, but seriously though, what has writing, done, writing it done done for you? Because of me writing through some of my bitter stuff in my head. <laughs> I'm going to use the word bitter because um, at that... You write your goals see, too and your dreams. I, oh, I write them down. And so far, I'm executing my goals and then I go into my book and I do tick off like, you did this? My biggest, biggest accomplishment right now is driving. <laughs> I can drive. <laughs> High five. High five. I can drive. And you're driving tonight. And I'm driving tonight. She's going to be scared, but she's going to she gonna it up. <laughs> I can drive. And I, I always thought, I know it's about her, but this is just minus five minutes. <laughs> I thought I would never sit around the steering. And that's really, really true. I've struggled. I've, I've, I've envied my friends, family, everyone when they drive in their car. And it's like, what will I ever be able to do? It's so hard. Stop telling yourself it's hard. It's not hard. I had the perfect teacher. He was super awesome. And I did. I nailed it on my first attempt. 
I passed my exam on my first attempt and I passed my driving test. Like how you give attempt. the teacher credit <laughs> before you didn't reach to him. Before you reached to that teacher. <laughs> oh, oh, this teacher I'm talking about. <laughs> this teacher. <laughs> This teacher I'm talking about. It's okay. She, it's okay. It's she okay. was patient <laughs> until she see me swerving in front of the place. She's like, "What? <laughs> Why are you over there? <laughs> what reason have you gone over there?" Let's <laughs> Let's Oh my I was God. a very patient teacher, <laughs> as you guys know, who know me. But now. because of her, I was able to execute on my first attempt. She was perfect. And when I said I'm sick, she says. For two hours, you can make it. Let's go. <laughs> she said, I was like, I'm not in the mood. She said, I know, but let's go. Every Saturday, uh, I was out driving. Oh, my gosh. Because of my beautiful You're teacher. welcome. The bill is coming in the mail. It wasn't for free. But she's so direct and bold. Sometimes I have to like, okay, I know that she's like that. So let's just work with it. <laughs> <laughs> but she is perfect teacher. She's awesome. She has her moments, but she's okay. Did I finish answering that question? I don't know, but we just went over a <laughs> bit of time. <laughs> Walk us through this one. With them. Yeah. Oh, so the challenging season. So, yeah. so after I went to that class. <laughs> My bad. So after I went to that class, I just went back to work saying, I'm just going to work on doing me. Okay. And being the best version of myself. And so I stopped getting sick and it was good. And I'm still walking that walk. It's something, it's not a destination, it's a journey. So, see, we're still there. Learning process, learning journey, and she's still on that journey. And she's doing very well. Ah, I'm so proud of her. <laughs> but you know, we leave it at that. But you know. You know. Nakia, mm. what does success mean to you? What does success mean to me? Mm-hmm. I think success for me is no regrets. Um, making sure that for every opportunity, I showed up and I'm my best. Um, that's for me personally. Right. I think I also have responsibilities to my sons. Mm -hmm. I want them to be awesome men, strong men, humble men, loving men. Um, and I would love to make sure that I did right by them and give them a strong foundation and have lessons to learn and just send them on their way. Um, and in terms of my friendships i want to continue to work on that and and have those really close relationships for my girls and for my brethren too it's not only girls i have really <laughs> good um awesome men Male. who are good Male. friends and for and for karen for us to continue to do our best to walk this thing called marriage because marriage kicks my ass um it's a journey for me in terms of humbling um since i've been married and walking that walk it's tough marriage is not for punks at all go ahead i'm not there yet <laughs> so what would you say you're most proud of what am i most proud of I am most proud of the relationships I've built over time. And I will say that in most of them, we've had good times and bad times. I've had friends that I was a hot mess with that I wasn't good to at all. I wasn't good. I didn't show up as a friend and yet they loved me through it, or a sister, and and they loved me through it, and or a daughter, and um, I think when I when I'm at, when I stand still with myself and I look at the circle around me, you, and and the relationship that we have built over time, because it's very difficult. I know that I'm difficult. <laughs> I, know, I know that I'm difficult. But it's work. When I look at my relationships with my friends outside of work. I am proud. 
when I look at my relationships at work and the, the support system I've had in different companies and not just the, where I'm at now or the business I'm at now. I have relationship that spans oceans, that spans companies and it's diverse. I have different type of friends, different ages, different stages of life. That's what I'm most proud of. I'm, I'm most proud of my connections. And you, you try to maintain them. I try to maintain them. And when I mess up, I go back. Sometimes they call me out on my crap. And I said, you know, I have to own my crap and say, my bad. And and they know. I call them out too. Some people are okay with it. Some people are not. But I, I do tell you exactly how I feel at the moment. She does. <laughs> but it's worth it. Hey, you too. I do I not. am not alone in this. <laughs> So, at the end of your life, what do you want people to remember about Nakia Sabin? You know, you know, now I, <laughs> going through this process is very humbling yeah. now because now I'm on the other end. I love being in your side. I love being in your side. And, and it's so sad because I, I actually wrote these questions. But my goodness, man, it, they are not, they're not so easy to just answer. Um, so when I die, when I die, I want people to say she made a difference in this area. This is how she made a difference to me. I want them to say she killed it kill it <laughs> and she was a badass and they will and uh, but i want them to say that she didn't waste this thing this breath this breath that we have this gift that we have she didn't waste it wow <laughs> So cool. I, I'm listening and I was about to say something and it just went through my <sighs> mind but at the end it was worth it and she has made a great impact in my life personally so far she has dragged me <laughs> I'm not going to say she just pushed me she dragged me to grow but today at this moment in my, and stage in my life I can see the growth. I know there's a lot more to come and she's going to have a lot more to do with it. I'm not going to like all of it, but it's going to be worth it in the end. And we're going to be on a jet, her jet. Oh, in the future. we are so going on a jet. We're going on a jet. Someday, somehow. Because we've been talking about this process. I right know. Here. I and have here, the picture in my head. Here we are right now. So I know <laughs> we're going to go on the jet. I may be busy at work, but I think I may be able to steal a few minutes. Off. And we're going to go shop. For a day. Yes. I say Paris, but whatever country it is for a day yes, and then no, fly back. Yes. Because I just want to say I flew there in my own plane. There's yep. going to be some awesome 90s music. You know, the music <laughs> from when I was skinny. Skinny music. <laughs> and we're going to have a blast. And our pilot is going to be hot. And oh, yes. Yes. And maybe from Korea. And or, yeah. <laughs> Maybe from Korea. Hey, hey, that's a, that's a, that's another episode. That's another episode. That's, another and that's episode. an inside story. <laughs> but um, but thank you, thank you for doing this. Thank you for <laughs> in creating it. Yes, I hope this I is hope a so. platform for all of us to own our stuff. That S word. <laughs> And, on our shit and be able to talk about stuff that we don't want to talk about i know i tell her see her in five years from my video but i don't think it's going to take that long but i gotta be prepared for it because they're going to come with lots of stuff so see you soon guys and thank you for joining us we had an awesome time now can you take it away so i hope that this video helps to let you see what catch up is going to be like um, my vision is that for us, we're going to start with the reunion. And so we're probably going to be at a park. My goal is to have it away from the noise, somewhere private, where it's just the two of us so that you won't have any spectators watching you trying to figure out your answers and that we just sit down and talk and yes. it's informal. We have some guided questions, but, but we are in no means tied 
to the list of questions that exactly. we have. Yes. And you get to look at the questions beforehand and you get to choose. So we have 10 questions. We talked about a lot, but believe me, it was yeah, 10 questions. Just normal. <laughs> just, just talk about your, just talk. So, yeah. it, so it's 10 questions you choose. If you want to answer two, you answer two. If you want to answer four, you answer four. You choose what you want to answer and you sit and you catch up with Nakia. So what happens after I video it? So the videos won't be posted the same day. Hell no. <laughs> so you catch up with me. I videotape it. Right now I'm just using my smartphone. Then I go back home to Cincinnati and I edit the video and you get to review it and approve it or we go back and forth i said i like this piece i don't like this piece and we edit it we co-create this is this is the thing here this is not going to be done in a vacuum we partner we co-create your video your episode and when it's at a place that you're good and you approve then we share it right we're going to put it and host it on our youtube channel and then share it in our mannings group and we're going to start with that crowd there's people who cannot make it to the reunion that I know want to share their stories and want to participate in this project. And I might have to go fly around different places to go capture their stories. I know there's a trip in Jamaica and I know there's my classmates in Jamaica that I have to coordinate and I'm coming to you and we're going to videotape and we're going to get your stories. So even if you're not at the reunion, the reunion is just the beginning but you get to participate in the same process. I sit with you, we talk, right. we catch up. I'm on the other side, which is a funner side. But you get to take <laughs> your time to answer the questions. This side, this side is pretty yeah, fun. To answer your <laughs> questions. And then we work on editing the video and then we share. Let's talk about the schedule. So we're not going to be posting everybody's videos at the same time. So it's going to be staggered and on a different schedule. And we'll figure it out based on the videos that we get in terms of how often we release a new video on the YouTube channel. But I hope that this kind of helped you to see that picture and that you're not too scared to participate in this catch up exercise. So please be bold, reach out to me, participate in this project and please like the videos when you do like the videos give support to this project subscribe to the youtube channel and feel free to give me your insights your feedback as we grow because i am so learning this on the fly guys on the fly she does <laughs> late nights <laughs> <laughs> all right so thank you so much and i hope you have an awesome day sounds good Bye, guys. Bye. See you next time. We're going to give them a Korean thumbs up. Fight, Fight team! team. <laughs>